um, that has continued to be tested is everything is new. Um, I'm a, a freshman plus um, for two years. Everything is new and it's a big learning curve. How did it feel to see some of those threes fall in? You're the big blue nation kind of get behind you. What did that feel like? Yeah, it's nice. It's, um, Everything is, like I said, it feels new. Um, and it's something that I'm continuing to adjust to. And tonight it felt like uh, I took a step forward in adjusting to, to playing and, and shooting the ball in game with Rupp behind me. How did you let TP beat you to that loose ball uh, in full court? You see, it was actually on purpose. I thought that he was going to throw it off the backboard, but he decided to take it himself. How fun is it playing for that guy? He's awesome. Um, he's ever since I was 15 years old. I know I've I've wanted to play for Coach Pope, and so um, I'm glad that I get to do it now. It's it's fun every day, and he pushes us to be better. You you talked about how he's kind of the same person here as when he recruited you, which I think is kind of rare in college basketball coaching. But how has your relationship grown over the time since you've actually been on campus with him? Yeah, well, it's it's different, as any athlete will tell you, the recruiting process and, and then actually playing for the coach. Um, but um, I would say it's it's been better than, than what I expect. I didn't know what to expect, but um, I knew that I was going to be learning from from Coach Pope, and that's exactly what's happened. Is I'm learning every day, trying to to pick his brain and and, and learn from him every day, and um, it's definitely expanded my my basketball knowledge. Have you ever? When's the last time you like didn't start for for a team? Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been a while. Um, maybe my my junior high team. Uh, which another thing that's that's new and comes with adjustment is is learning how to play, um, come in and and continue with the pace that uh, the players have been playing at, and something that uh, I'm learning and uh, comes with a lot of learning curves. And so I'm just trying to be patient with myself and, and learn as fast as I can, and get better every time I do it um, to to get better at my role, um, try to find find my role and, and be the best that I can at it. Does, does sitting over there for the first five, six minutes of the game, does that help you kind of gather the pace of the game, kind of maybe see things that the other team is doing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. As, as a bench, we, we're talking right right off the gates how they're, when we're going into our flow series, how they're guarding it. Are they staying with their own? Are they switching? Are they Aggie switching? So we have different reads for all those different defenses. And so it's very important for us to, to see that on the bench and to, to be talking to it. First time out, we're talking what defense are they running, what are they doing, and and how we can beat it. Is that something that either a coach incurs or a player stepped up naturally? What what kind of, how did that start, the, the talking yeah, on the well, bench at the beginning? Yeah, well, we, we practice that in practice. We have our scout team switch up the defenses, and then we see it once, and we're talking to each other. How can we beat this this defense that we just saw once? Um, so that's something we practice. Colin, how cool was that moment for Trent and Travis did their first career threes in the same game, just for you guys as a freshman class? It's awesome. Um, I just. I love love seeing them and and me shoot the ball um, well together because we every day us three are grouped to to shoot together. We're always competing against each other every day, um, and it's tough competition with those two. And so I'm not surprised at all. There's obviously many more to come, as the whole state of Kentucky and all of BBN knows. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. You've, you've talked about really appreciating those two guys as Kentuckians coming in and kind of teaching the ropes, I guess, of UK basketball. Do you, do you ever step back and think about like, longer term? Obviously, you all have big goals this season, but maybe a little longer term. Were you guys kind of growing up here together as basketball? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, it's been, it's been a huge, huge blessing for me. Sometimes we'll be shooting and we do like a little shooting game where we'll, we'll rotate one shot each and the first one to, to, seven, to seven makes wins. Um, wins the spot um, and it's very rare that um, the person that won the spot didn't make seven out of seven and so just like the expectation that's been set with shooting with those guys is just, I'll like step back and be like what was I like my expectations for myself and like a shooting workout and stuff like that um, just drastically changed as I've, I've worked with them and gotten a lot better. Have you ever played on the you said you were an everyday, every play guy. What does that mean, you think? I just got there every day and get a model, every play, no days off, no minutes, no seconds off. And every time I'm out on the floor, I give it my all. You know, that's how I got here. That's what I'm going to keep doing until I'm done playing basketball. It seems like every game you've gotten off to a really fast start. What, what, what's behind that? 
just being ready to go, you know? Well, I'm ready to go whenever he calls my name. Whether it could be in the first minute, it could be the last minute. I'm gonna be ready to go and go out there and do my best. Do you enjoy the role that you have? Yeah. Just, it just feels like you bring joy every time you step on the floor. Nah, yeah, I'm just happy to really be here, to be honest. Like, I, like, I'm not really supposed to be here if you really look at my story. So just me being here and be, being able to put it on this jersey, I just love it. And it, I, I'm so appreciative. So that's why every time I go out there, I'm just happy to be here. Has it still hit you like that you're doing this and participating in this interview? I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, it, I mean, kind of. Like, every day I go out there, it's just like, it's another reason to be grateful. And, like, you know, God put me in a position to be able to go out there and put on this first Cedars jersey and represent all these people in the state and all the people who support us around the country. So it just really means a lot. And that's why I really enjoy it because I'm just appreciative of my, of my opportunity. Does the eruption of after you make a shot does that feel normal to you just what is the feeling when you when you make I mean, a nah, shot it's not normal it feels great you know all these people supporting you and stuff it's really like a great feeling like it's the best feeling in the world i feel like you're a shot you hear the whole crowd going crazy yeah, it's the best. what can you say about kobe just doing what he does night in night out just can't be like that's what he does you know <laughs> it's not even it's not even a surprise anymore i know it's not a surprise to you it's not a surprise to me he does it every day and just keep expecting it from him. <laughs> You're an elite shooter, obviously, but would you consider him the best shooter in college basketball, just what he's doing? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean the numbers really show it. Like, I don't know how to say it. It's not really no opinions or nothing. You know, it's just he, he all go out there, he's shooting like 80% from three or something crazy. So, yeah, he's probably he's definitely the best. Coach joked tonight that he, he went five of eight and messed up his three-point percentage. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I guess he actually did. Work. That's, <laughs> it's crazy, but he doesn't really miss that much. So it's, just, it's great to have a teammate like that, you know. Have you ever seen a shoe flying in the middle of a game? No, that was that was first. I'm been in college a long time. That was the first I seen that one. That's crazy. I had no call to it. That was crazy. <laughs> what was your reaction in real time? I was just like, what is, is that? I was so confused. Like I literally was so confused. I was looking at BG, then I see a shoe flying across the court. I was like, literally, like what is going on right now? Can you kind of uh, articulate what Kerr brings to the team? when he doesn't even score? It's just his energy, like, it's, he, he, he does, it feels like, it's crazy how he didn't score, because he felt like he did, like, it's just energy around the, like, when he gets on the court, you feel a new energy, like a new vibe, like, he just, he brings so much pace and energy and joy, he also brings joy to the court, too, so it's just great to have him on the court sometimes. Coach Pope talked about, and so did Coach Williams talked about this, the BBM tonight. Those three started falling, they really seemed to get into it. How was it out there playing in front of them tonight? Go get into it like that. I mean, it's the best fan base in the world, you know. Like, it's just every, every, they, they're consistent. Every, every, every game they're out there, they're giving it their all, you know, supporting us. They have our backs, and it's just great to be able to represent them every game. How cool is it to see Travis and Trent kind of see their work pay off? Travis breaks 100 with, with his three, and then Trent follows him right up. Yeah, it was great. You know, I'm happy for those guys. They they out there putting the hard work in the gym all the time. You know, when their when their chance comes, they're gonna be they're gonna be ready to play and they're gonna be great great players for sure. Have you been part of a you know a team with this kind of talent where, well, probably not this kind of talent, <laughs> but every guy seems to be really pulling for the next guy to do something. Nah, nah. This is like the most together team I've been on, the closest team I've been on, the most talented team. It's just crazy. You know, being here, it's just. Uh, I can't wait to see what we do when it comes to March and April. It's really, really going to put on the show for sure. I mean, you personally, do you have as much fun sometimes seeing somebody else? Yeah, I'm just happy. You, you know, like when people when people say like understand that assignment, we really understand that assignment. Like we're, we're all here for one goal. Like truly, it's not no individual awards none of that. We're here for number nine, like national championship. It's nothing individual. We're all here for number nine. Coach Frazier does every day. He tells us what number nine will do to our lives. So that's all we're chasing, number nine. Coach, Coach Pope talked, just talked at the nauseam about just how well you guys have all fit into your roles. He's talked about guys like you, talked about guys like her that have came maybe to not a lesser role, but less minutes and maybe, you know, and just fitting into more of a role. And you guys both have seen success in March and been in those different roles. How is it, is it to just be in a different season and a different role here? Uh, well, it's, it's new, you know, it's different. Like you said, it's a different role, obviously. I feel like every year of my college career, I've been in a different role. And it's, 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 another, it's another role, you know, another adjustment, but it's just been great, you know, like being able to put on a jersey and represent all the people that went through this program, all the people that support this program, it just, it just means the world. So I, I'd love to fill my role out there and give it my all in any, any amount of time that I have out there.
you guys talk all the time about every game being the most biggest, you know, of your all's lives. How hard is it to actually live that out? And, you know, when you see the numbers or, you know, what, what a team's ranked offensively or defensively to still come in with the same approach and, you know, kind of killer instinct no matter what the ranking is. Uh, you know, we, we just – it's, it's because we, we we're, I feel like we're a mature team, so we kind of been through like a lot of ups and downs throughout our whole career, and we're, we're older. We, we know what it takes to, you know, be able to be a good team when it comes down to the wire when we, when we want to play. So games like these, it's about us, you know, us getting better. So I mean, obviously it's hard sometimes to stay focused, or whatever. But as an older team, it's easy to just be able to, you know, not focus on the other team, focus on us, focus on getting better at what we got to get better at, so that we can move to the next game and continue to get better, so that when it's time for March and April, then we're at the best we could be. Does it help coming from a mid-major and kind of being the team that would go into environments like this, trying to beat the big dog? Like, does it help for you personally to to be able to kind of be the opposite of that now, and know what the approach is going to be? I mean, it, it's actually a great question. That was a great question. Because I, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Like, I really, like, like, a year ago, I was on the other side. I was the other team coming into a school like this. But it's like the energy in our locker room, the energy around we all have is just so mature. Like, there's it, I, it's never a doubt in my mind that we're going to go out there and win. Like, it's not like we're going to go out there and BS or, you know, not give our all. Like, it's just such a mature energy around the team. Like, we're here about business, and we're not going to let nobody, you know, step, in, step in away of what we're going to get done. You know, so it's, it's, I don't even have that worry for real. What, what's in the water up in New York? It seems like you and Kobe just can't miss. <laughs> I mean, you, just, you know, it's, it's just the work. You know, it's, just, it's, not, it's nothing different. You know, he puts in a lot of work. I put in a lot of work. And just, you know, just come, come to the show. There's a lot of talk about Pope's offense this year. But, I mean, y'all's defense has really stepped up when you guys have needed it. I mean, tonight you guys have 13 steals, 9 blocks. What does it say that you guys, you know, that defense is so underrated. I mean, what does it say about your defense? You know, that's sometimes an emphasis on Coach Pope. You know, a lot of people think about his offense, his X's and O's and stuff like that. But another emphasis that he, you know, gave to us while recruiting us and early in the summer is that we're going to be a great defensive team. You know, A.B. has done a great job of, you know, implementing defensive principles and certain stuff that we have to carry out. And, you know, it, like I said, we're a mature team, so we should go out there every day and try to get better at everything we got to get better at. So that's the result of it in the games. How does it work in, in practice with, with Coach A.B.? Is, is he kind of taking over the lead and when, when you're concentrating on defense, or is he? Yeah, of, he's like more of our like defensive coach. You know, obviously he has a great background in you know, coaching defensive teams, uh, so you said. So he definitely takes, you know, a leap in that, and he's really like smart. So he like, watches a lot of film, and he just tells you little pointers and stuff about how to, you know, be better on the defensive side. This team is so unselfish. Is that just from y'all's personalities? Is that from Coach Pope? Like, where does that come from? Just a mixture of everything, I feel like. You know, everybody, we're here to win. We're not here for any individual goals. We're here to win the national championship. So, uh, you know, seeing your brother eat is just as good as eating yourself, you know. We're, we're like brothers here. It's, this team is so close. It's like we're one big happy family. So just seeing the next man eat is just is a great feeling. Speaking of that, Trent and Travis each got their first three-pointers, collegiate three-pointers tonight. What was that like for you guys to see? You no, know, I'm happy for them. You know, they put in the work. They shoot a lot of shots. When not, not a lot of people are looking at them. And I know one day they're going to be great players and, you know, really, really show what they're about. But I'm just happy they got to go out there and get their feet wet a little bit and make their shots. I know you talked about playing in Coach Pope's system and seeing what he did at BYU and really looking forward to that. But have you even been surprised at the, the openness and the, I guess the green lightedness of this team once you've actually started playing in these games? That Surprise, not so much because like we've been together since like June, so like it's like like second nature at this point. Like this is what it is. Like it's not even a surprise at this point. It's just how we play and it's who we are at this point. So it's not really a surprise. Did it? I mean, you put up a lot of shots, obviously, at, at FDU, but did it take some getting used to at all? Yeah, um, for sure. yeah, it is definitely, it's definitely a different type of shots, you know. Like the ball movement here is ridiculous. Like everybody's unselfish, like you just said. So it's just you know always being ready for the ball, being ready to hit your shot, be in the right spot at the right time. You know, cutting, a little simple stuff. But like I said, you've been here since June, so it's just second nature at this point. You ever look there knowing that um, he's going to stay aggressive and keep on pulling them up? I mean, that helps us a lot. It seems like a lot of the team is that way, though. Anybody can get hot any night. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the benefit with our team. Um, we're so deep that uh, you never know who it's going to be, which a lot of opposing teams are going to have trouble guarding that. So, I mean, it's, I mean having that uh, depth is huge. What's it like playing for an Jefferson? I mean, 29 to 6. It's crazy. Um, I mean, I really haven't been a part of a team like that. The way the ball moves, like the pop rule that we have is huge. 
um, everyone's getting involved. So, you know, it's just great knowing that you have a lot of selfish guys and everyone's happy for each other regardless of who it is that night. Seeing Trent and Travis both hit their first three-pointers, what was that like for you guys? Well, I was so excited because, uh, you know, we, we practice with those guys every day and um, they put in so much work. And I mean, you guys know what type of players they are because they're the Kentucky boys. So, you know, just seeing their work come into fruition. And I mean, that's many more to come, really. So. You hear Coach Pope praising you after the game, saying you're the most consistent guy on the team. How are you feeling mentally, physically, uh, four or five games in the season? Man. Feeling great, yeah, for <laughs> real. But um, yeah, I kind of came in on the back end, so I ain't really here too much. But um, I'm just trying to stay consistent in the things I do. Control what I can, which is my energy. Um, my motor, and I feel like the ball finds good energy. So, I mean, I'm not worried about too much besides just going out there and making plays in terms of my motor. 108 points. It's uh, a lot of points. What's that like for you all? I mean, I think you're averaging 102 at home. Yeah, I didn't even know we had 108 till the end for real. But, I mean, it's, it's dope because uh, we put up so many threes, and obviously three greater than two. So, I mean, we could run it up quick. So, um, I mean, that just goes to the offensive uh, the firepower that we have, I would say. How do you explain your fast start? Uh, just being aggressive from the jump, um, knowing that I'm just trying to set the tone every game in terms of how we want to play the whole game, which is fast, um, compete, play aggressive, and that's all the things I do. So I just try and start, I mean, aggressive every game. Has it always been that way for as long as you've been playing? There's a lot of guys that takes them a while to get running down the floor a few times. Yeah, um, it was kind of, last year I would say it was like that a little bit, but um, I noticed like in the second half, that's when I really wake up. So, I mean, obviously every year you try and get better. So I kind of took that into account this year, just knowing that, I mean, we're a deep team too. So you got to start, got to start fast so you can impose your will. Did you change your pre-game routine at all from last year to this year? Nah, just, um, you know, as you get older and more experienced, you know, you kind of get a feel for the game and certain when you have to make certain plays and when you have to kick in. So that's kind of what it was, really. Is there a certain player you kind of maybe model your game after? Because I feel like when I see you, I see Jimmy Butler. Yeah, um, it's funny. I've been I've been hearing that a lot. I like Jimmy Butler a lot for sure, just the way he plays off of two, and um, I mean his intensity on both sides of the ball. But I mean I watch a lot of uh, Dwayne Wade, uh, Victor Oladipo, Jimmy Butler now as well. Just five games into this, but what's this experience been like for you? I mean, it's been great uh, just playing in front of Big Blue Nation. I mean, this home stretch that we're in and the support that they bring every single night, regardless if it's Tuesday or Wednesday. or I mean, they just they just show so much support. On top of that, it's a dream to play for Kentucky. So, you know, I'm just happy that I'm here, really. How do you guys explain the unselfishness? Because it seems to be top to bottom. Most teams um, have a couple of guys that try to get theirs when they need to and all that stuff. You guys know. Yeah, I mean, that's credit to Pope for uh, and um, the people he recruited. I feel like he kind of, he kind of like handpicked it in a certain way. He knew what he wanted and he knew what would be valuable to win a national championship. So um, he got a lot of older guys and we all know that if we want to do big things, like we have to sacrifice, which is we're not going to know who's going to be the guy every single night, but we're going to play hard and compete every single night. So. I mean, we all have big goals for this year, so we just know we have to put our ego and certain things to the side. Yeah, we talk about COVID, but you guys really have no idea who's going to be the leading scorer every night, do you? Nah, we don't. It's, it's crazy because just the way the offense is, it's like a field thing. So, I mean, we just cut hard, make make a, the right play, the simple play, whoever's open is going to get the shot. So we, we don't run a lot of plays. It's just more like a field thing. No. Did you see what happened when the uh, – Got through that shoe with Brandon? Yeah, I mean, wow. that was weird. Like, he wasn't going to get back in the play regardless. I don't know what the shoe was going to do, but yeah, I mean, not going to stop. You're not going to stop Brandon when he got a wide open lane, so I don't blame him in terms of doing whatever you can to try and stop him. But yeah, that was wild. <laughs> when you come into a game like this for the opponents 0 5, is it tough to keep yourself? And the whole team motivated throughout the whole game, the course of the game as well, and the, and the leader. Nah, not at all. Like I don't, I didn't even look at their record. Obviously, I saw their first couple of games, but we we're just trying to approach every single game the same way. Because when you take when you take certain games off, that's when you can create inconsistency, and you don't want to create that on the team, especially when you're trying to do big things. So, 
I mean, Coach Pope preaches it, and on top of us, and on top of that, we all preach it to it, to each other. Just being consistent in what we do, and just having the same energy regardless of who's across the court from us. I think it seems like every game you get off to a fast start. What what what's behind that? Um, just trying to set the tone. Um, I'm a guy that, I mean, I have a high energy, high motor, so I want to, um, a lot of times people aren't ready in the beginning to really play and they're trying to get their legs warm and stuff like that. So I'm trying to kind of take advantage of that a little bit, just start start fast. Um, I'm an aggressive guy, so I'm really just trying to set the tone. Coach Pope talked about how he says, it seems like Otega may be our most consistent player. And he says, you know, the media is asking us about this guy and that guy, but it seems like Otega is just doing it every game. Kind of take that on, or is it just you playing your style? I mean, I don't, I don't really look at all that. I feel like I've been, I've been the underdog a lot in my life, so I'm really used to it. So I just go and do the things that I know I can control. I'm talking about more like, is it? Are you kind of saying, hey, I'll be there no matter what? Kind of like he said, you being that consistent oh, yeah. player there every single game you're gonna show. Up. Yeah, I'm just trying to go out there and do what I do, and um, I have a certain role that I feel like helps the team. So, I mean, if I don't do that certain nights, I feel like that'll negatively impact the team. So, you know, I'm just trying to be consistent in my energy and what I could bring. Talk about being an underdog. Are there specific moments in your life that you kind of felt like you were being doubted an underdog? And do you remember um, those moments? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot. I'm not going to get into it now for real. Just when I was younger, you know, AAU, all those things. Um, high school, when you're early, like freshman year, is like, you know, it's a lot of figuring out. And um, a lot of people are just overlooking you because, you know, if you're not ranked a certain number, you just get overlooked. So, I mean, those things happen, but, I mean, now I'm at Kentucky, so, I mean, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Ainsley talked about over there, he said, you know, it was awesome to see Travis and Trent do what mm -hmm. they did. 